And again, the craziest thing is that you have the stock market way wilder than crypto. Absolutely. You have currency markets, which almost never happens wilder, bond markets wilder, and here you have crypto just going nowhere. But what happens is when these things go to sleep, when they wake up, there's a mega move. And so that's the question is which way is it going to go? Mega that it would beat its all time high? No, not, mega? not that mega yet. Okay. Um, eventually, yes, I do have that long term thought process. But, but I think in the near term, I'm looking for actually a move up probably to 25,000, which okay. from here would be a, a nice chunk of change. Um, but eventually, reality is going to set back in. And I still unfortunately don't think the lows are in yet. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, President and Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and Verified Crypto Investing, Gareth Soloway, updates about his thoughts on Bitcoin bottom and upcoming bull run, gold's performance so far in 2022, and all altcoins in which he is investing. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Gareth Soloway reveals why a mega move will make Bitcoin's price to the next level. And I think that's part, partly due to, due to you have some consolidation going on because you have people buying for currency issues with we know the dollar has been ripping higher and mm -hmm. crushing a lot of currencies. So that's giving it a little bit of a bid. And then you also have sellers that are still unsure about it. There's lack of regulation. There's lack of clarity. And so it's kind of this, this midpoint. And when you get a, a sleeping chart, it basically means buyers and sellers are equaling themselves, right? They're equaling each other out. And that's keeping price in a really, really tight zone. Never mind what the naysayers are claiming about Bitcoin in the midst of this down crypto market. The case for sustained Bitcoin interest and continually improving fundamentals remains as sound as ever. Research has detailed Bitcoin's recent record low volatility, and while traders expect an eventual price breakout, the October 26 price move to $21,000 is not yet being interpreted as confirmation that $20,000 has now become support. So S&P right now into the midterms, we've talked about how you likely get this little bit of a bid. Yeah. We saw the Wall Street Journal article that just came out, I think it was last Friday, uh, talking about how the Fed may raise 75 basis points and then pause. And the market just loves that because it's the first hint that the Fed is wavering. Uh, we've seen housing data. That was very, very weak. The markets love that. The dollar started to come in. So all the things are working for the market to lift into the midterms. And then what I'm concerned about is after the midterms, how does the economy look and how do things start to slide? Which way do you think the VIX could break here? So I think in the near term, VIX is going to head lower. Um, but I think the VIX still has a long upside move in 2023. And so, so you have to think about it like this is we're entering this unprecedented period where investors, remember, think about how many new investors came into the market over the last five years or so. They've never experienced a prolonged bear market. So it's going to be one that tests their kind of ability to just stay with the trade, stay with the investments in light of all the negativity that they're going to hear about an economy that is going to be stuck in a recession for potentially a long period of time. And I've gone on record and I said it yesterday in the speech that I think we don't see new all-time highs for 10 years in the S&P. The bear case includes limited on-chain transaction activity, stagnant non-zero address growth, and reduced minor profits presenting a strong Bitcoin sell-off risk. But data also shows that long-term hodlers are more determined than ever to weather the current bear market. They're, they're front-loading this because they're reacting instead of kind of foreshadowing or, or kind of looking ahead. And they're reacting to the fact that they were late, they were wrong on transitory and all yeah. these things. And so they're overcompensating. And I really worry that at some point the consumer is going to run out of money. We paid, you know, so many people paid down their credit cards and everything. Now they're starting to build that back up. When that stops and they don't have that money anymore, yep. the, the economy is going to take a big dive. On-chain active address growth remains stagnant across the BTC network. A reduction in transaction translates to a decrease in utilization and user growth for the network, factors which could possibly hinder BTC price expansion. There's always really good opportunities out there in bull and bear markets. And so, so something like Meta makes sense to yeah. me. Everyone's hating on it. Everyone's saying, you know, they're, they're spending too much money on the metaverse. And so that what that does is it creates this negative kind of vibe going into their earnings coming up. And just overall, people's expectations are so low. And we've seen price come down, I think, 65% off of its highs. So something like that, where it's now trading at a Ford PE of 10, yep. it makes sense in this type of environment. And expectations are just so low. What do you do with Apple? Apple, I still think, is overvalued. I do. I, okay. look, I look historically, right? So think about this, right? You go back in any other period in time, 
a stock like Apple was always trading at like a 10 or 12 PE ratio. It's still north of 20. So I know people are just diehard iPhone yeah. people, uh, but... Okay. In previous years, many BTC miners held onto large quantities of BTC in their reserves. However, since the onset of the bear market, many miners are selling BTC in order to cover their capital costs and operational expenses. So I do like Cardano okay. right now. I do like uh, a little bit of Solana short term, okay. um, Avalanche, um, Ethereum, Bitcoin. I think all of those in the near term are quality and I think you'll get a pop. But I do worry about the longer term. I think if you're a long term investor, you focus on best of breed, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. What about XRP? <sighs> XRP is just so <laughs> tricky. Like, so you're basically, basically with XRP, it's all hovering on this judge's decision. And I hate as an investor, if you can't quantify, if you don't have some insight into what's going on in that brain, then you really have to be careful about committing capital. With BTC mining production costs rising amid a backdrop of falling revenues, miners are deleveraging by selling their newly mined BTC, Glassnode warned. Deleveraging events of miners may lead to distribution into thin order books, historically light demand, and persistent macroeconomic uncertainty and liquidity constraints. I think the big hover right now is this regulation, right? And it's keeping so much money on the sidelines. I mean, pension funds, hedge funds, all these people, I do believe they want to invest. They see the light of Bitcoin and what it can do to the system and how it can improve yeah. things. But there's just like, well, what's the rules? And remember, they all have these fiduciary responsibilities yeah. to their clients where they can't be like, oh, let's just invest some anyways and hope for the best. Without knowing the rules, they can't do it. And so my big thing is we get these regulations out, at least we know, and I think money will start to flow in big money. In spite of the falling BTC prices, many BTC whales that hold an excess of 10,000 BTC are possibly increasing their holdings even in bear market conditions. As shown in the chart below, they continue to accumulate BTC after distributing in April and September. Did Gareth have your thoughts changed at all? Mm, that's a good question. So, so, so far I've been right. It's been the best performing. Yes. In terms of dollars, it's still down on the year, yes. but just a little bit. But for me, I'm still gonna go into 2023 still thinking it's gonna be the best performing asset. All right now, that's a, it's a harder. This one's harder because Bitcoin <laughs> is close to the lows, right. and and a simple bounce on Bitcoin could be thirty percent, which is hard for gold to do. But I still think Bitcoin will head down towards twelve, thirteen, maybe sub ten, and I think gold is getting close to its its meteoric run. Funds moved from centralized exchanges weakens immediate selling pressure on the market. Coinbase, one of the highest volume centralized exchanges, is seeing large amounts of BTC withdrawals. When comparing the current BTC outflow from Coinbase to the post-March 2020 peak at the exchange, over 48% of the total BTC at the exchange has been transferred out. So what do you think about Gareth Soloway's mega move prediction for Bitcoin? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.